Welcome back inside the huddle as we're heading into week number six. Lots of bye weeks. We'll get to that in just a second, but you'll notice we got a little jewelry on Damon Strong, and we talk about Damon Strong, a strong kid. Yeah, Damon Suter, he, he you know, he recently had surgery for osteosarcoma. I think, mm -hmm. I, think, I, think I said it right. Uh, recently had that uh, in his leg, in his right leg, and, and he got that removed. He's 90% cancer free. He's a Sand Jack kid, soft junior, doing well. Uh, went and saw him in the hospital this morning. Yeah. Uh, did a story on him a while back there for the Emerald Globe News, and he's he's a great kid. His mom Tiffany's done a lot of good things to help me stay involved, and and they have Bushland. You know, he's a Bushland kid too, and a Sand Jack kid. So they're wearing the that decals on the back yep. of their helmets. They're handing out these bracelets, the Tatum Tough Foundation made for for him. So those are pretty cool. You can get those if you go look for Tiffany Lynn on uh, Facebook. She can get that uh, hooked up for you one of these. Yeah, very so, cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah, awesome let's, stuff, man. let's dive into a little bit of the football and since we're kind of now lots of bye weeks getting ready for district we thought it'd be a good time to look at some of the area leaders and we're going to start with the passers yeah we're at the halfway point of the season so what a better time to look at the passers and just kind of what we expected uh, am i right yeah who we they, talked about first yeah, the high of the powered year. offenses high powered quarterbacks yeah look who's right off the top of the list there man yeah, and we got uh, Keegan Kelp. I mean, yeah. we knew with the, his, with the re receivers that he was going to have and Creed Spivey, we're going to talk about him in a second. But, yeah. I mean, Keegan Kelp, he, he starts it off at the top, 1,300 passing yards and 19 touchdowns. I mean, this has been a very high-powered passing offense. And then Tucker Bridwell. Who he, has, with Tucker Bridwell, with Greg Pointer, uh, yeah. as you mentioned, more completions, 116 uh, completions, 1,300 yards as well. Not as many touchdowns as Kelp, but you know a, a lot of a lot of touchdowns there for Bridwell. Yeah, Bridwell a Jr. Uh, doing some good things. Then you got Marco Monreal, a kid that's an underrated kid, as you know. Uh, he's had a great year for Friona. They're four and one, and, and he, he doesn't have the touchdowns. But look, at the, you look at the stat numbers; it, it's astounding for 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 a kind of a, a balanced attack. That's a lot of yards for a team that runs as much as they throw the football. And speaking of running, we have some leaders to show you there as well, and it starts with a with a kid that. We've talked a lot about and yeah. Seth Dixon. No, no surprise in this guy, huh? No, uh, uh, he has, he's nearing 1,000 yards already, and it's a touchdown total, though. 12 <laughs> touchdowns already for uh, Seth Dixon and Herford. And then you look, there's a, you know, the Farwell. And, and that was like Lee, Lee Passmore and I were looking up these stats the other day, and Lee does an amazing job with these stats. And, and, and we're like, wow, Farwell. Of all, you wouldn't think Farwell would have a kid, but there he is right there. And, and then you have, here's my most impressive one, though. Ben Crockett, the sixth man. Yeah. He plays half games because they, they beat everybody by halftime, and he plays an 80-yard field. And look at those numbers. Yeah, 754 uh, <laughs> rushing yards. And like you oh, said, a lot, a lot of those, uh, you know, they're 50. Once you get the 50 mercy rule, they're done at halftime. <laughs> so like you said, a lot of this done in the first half of those games. Yeah, so, you know, the names that we talked about the first of the year, the Seth Dixons, the Keegan Kelps, the, uh, those names are just the names we thought we'd, we'd see right at the top. And then when you look at receiving uh, you, you bring up this kid right here, the McCook, saying, and it's not just him, not the only McCook, but the one that's uh, the biggest stat leader there in Canadian, leading the receivers in the area. Yeah, another great quarterback, uh, you keep Casey Cavalier, who's up there in his stats. But yeah, Garrison McCook, what does he have, 10 touchdowns, 29 catches, something like that right now? And it's really close right now between Creed and, and Garrison, as you have 547 yards for McCook and Spivey right there at 541. So they're neck and neck for the area lead, both with 10 touchdowns on the season. And then Luke Ray, yeah. uh, he's been doing a fantastic job this year as well. Another guy we knew that would. And what's funny is uh, uh, who leads the who leads in receptions in the whole area, though, is a Panther running back. Uh, Caleb Caldwell, 35 receptions. So he, they, he's not on there because his yards are only like 300, but still. That's amazing for a lot of receptions. <laughs> if you're in yeah. fantasy football, you yeah, like to have love him. <laughs> he's your yeah, he's your points guy, yeah, no doubt. Right. And yeah, and I'm not a fantasy guy, but I know you know all about that. Yep. So those are some of the leaders from around the area. Huh. So now that we looked at stats, let's take a look at some teams, kind of our mid-season awards. We did this in the preseason, yeah. and there's, I mean, it's been nice because there's not a whole lot of changes. I mean, the most impressive team to me is Wellington. I've had them as game of the week a couple of times, thinking, all right, this is going to be a close one. And then Wellington kind of pulls away from pretty good opponents so far. Every coach you talk to, and I know you've talked to them too, they are who we thought they were. Yeah. And they're just pounding people, man. I mean, you beat a team like Panhandle 44 to 14. You're hammering West Texas high. I don't, there's no doubt that you'll see them in December. Another team you want to look out for, Clint, is in no doubt is McLean, number one all year since they beat Strawn. Who's going to stop them, man? They're just, they're just killing teams. I think they've, they've about scored about 200 to about 20. They haven't played a full game. They've played one snap past the third quarter in all but one game this year. It's amazing. And, and with the six-man talent that we have around here, lots of very good teams yes. for you to pick McLean. That, that says something about that team because of the way that we've seen some of these teams play around here. Yeah, it's just kind of 
how it's not if they're going to beat you, it's how bad they're going <laughs> to beat you. It seems like each week. Same with Wellington right now. Yeah, at Wellington playing very well. So excited about those two teams. So mm -hmm. those are two of the teams that we're looking at. And now how about a player? And again, I think we were talking about preseason players, and I talked a lot about Lawton Reichel yeah. as one of the guys to look out for because we I saw him at a bunch of these camps, you know, hearing not only from his coach but other coaches that, hey, this kid can play, and he's taking strides this summer. Taking huge strides. I, I said this. I've said it each week. I say it on mm -hmm. my podcast. The guy is the most improved player in the panhandle, man. He's taking it seriously. A lot of people looked at him last year, didn't think much of a quarterback. They thought more he's fast. He runs a 10-600. He's a, he's a wide receiver in college. Now this guy's taking it to the next level. He's got a great group of receivers around him. His footwork's fantastic. His arm's a lot better. He commands the offense. He's a leader, and he can run. <laughs> it was funny. I was standing with one of the uh, Jumbotron operators at, at Dick Bivens, and he said, hey, how do you think this game's going to go? I said, Caprock's got to be able to slow down Rotten, Lott and Reichel. If you remember, like first the play. first play takes it about 80 yards for a touchdown. <laughs> he looks at me and said, he's pretty good. I said, yeah, he, he can <laughs> play. How about a kid that you've been looking at? And I know this is one you talked about in the preseason. Yeah, and we just well. talked about him a while ago, Seth Dixon. Yep. He, he, another guy that we, we just knew was going to be there. Already 922 mm -hmm. yards. Nobody's been able to stop him. Mestacado bottled him up. And even when they did, he still was able to manage yards in the second half when they held him to negative yards in the first half. He finds ways to run the football. His offensive line's been great. Now he's got Dodge Loger back. The whole package. I like Herford a lot. They, they have a chance to go really deep. But it's just how low he gets. He's a wrestler. He mm -hmm. loves to use his legs. And he's a power. He's a driver. He's a north-south runner. Coaches love north-south runners. That's Seth Dixon. And we're going to get to see these two match up later in district play, oh, Herford and Canyon. That should be a lot of fun. That's you get got that story written all over it. Yes, man. it does. Yeah. <laughs> Guys like us love that. And speaking of some big games, we get into district play, uh, which we did a little bit last week mm -hmm. as well with PD and Caprock. But now Emerald High, they get their district opener. No Bo Barker in this game. Uh, obviously, though, with the concussion against mm -hmm. Randall, I think he's still out. I uh, expect to see Will Maynard, uh, the br little brother of Rhett Maynard, a sophomore, good player. He played the second half against Randall, uh, kind of a dual threat kid, kind of what Emerald High does, as you know. Uh, Monterey down a little bit. If, if Emerald High comes mm -hmm. out early, sets the tone, plays that good defense, I, I don't see why they can't win this game. And you speak about Maynard, uh, the, the younger brother at quarterback. We probably will see some red as well, even with oh, Bo Barker. The they were running some of that Wildcat. In fact, had some success off of some touchdown runs by Red early in the season already. Yeah, I like Emerald High. I think they, they, they got – they. They learned something from Randall, and I think they'll bounce back here in the district opener. And speaking of bouncing back, Paladero looking to do just that as they got beat by Caprock in their opener, and now they'll be in their second game of district. Yeah, playing Lubbock High, and, and what a great – that's I, I, I hate to say this, Lubbock High has had a rough start to the year. Yeah. They, they, they've struggled, and, and right now, as good as they played against Caprock, a lot of momentum. You can take off the loss. It's hard to say that, but I think you saw you were there. You saw the, the flashes of how good PD can be. Yeah, I've seen both these teams play, and I, and I think Paladero has the edge. I mean, this is a good yeah. chance for them to get back to one and one in district. It's play. always scary when you take a team on the road, and, yeah. and especially to a Lowry field, but I, I'm with you. I, I, PD should take care of business here. And now we take a look at a 3A matchup, but actually matching up with the 2A is we get the Childress Bobcats, one of the top teams in 3A. I think that's unquestioned at this point yeah. in the season, taking on one of the top teams in 2A. Yeah, this is a dream matchup, kind of 3A D2, number three in the state against one of the top teams in 2A D2, Region 3. So they wouldn't face Wellington until like a semi again, who the right. team they beat Wellington. I was there last year when they beat Wellington, went on to the state finals. Um, this is this is playoff kind of football all over it at Fair Park Stadium. Childress seems to have a lot of those. Do they not? No, they they load up their you know, free district schedule. Oh, right. I, I think that they've always done a good job of that. They lo Munster's lost a lot of edge compared to what they used to have, but still a lot of teams back for Brady Carney, who's one of the best coaches out there. Childress, big, physical. Luke Latimer does Luke Latimer things. I think they're a bigger team and more physical, be able to grind them out. Yeah, I think so. I think this can be one of those teams we could see undefeated you know, uh, at, at Halloween near October 31st. You know who's going to be in attendance, though. You know who's going to this game, Wade Williams. Oh, yeah. No he, doubt Wade Williams is going to be there. He there. wants yeah. to see Munster play. I bet he's going to sit and, right and, behind Munster's and side. And we'll take a little <laughs> bit of joy from seeing Childress get the win if they do. <laughs> just a little. Yeah, just a little. Yeah. <laughs> so those are some of the games to look at. Like we mentioned, a lot of bye weeks, but we're going to really get into district play next week. Yeah, Dalhart Pampa is also an interesting one real quick, and Groover Roscoe. I think those are two games we really want to take a look at this week but yeah light schedule easy for you and me yeah I'll take those anytime when we get them <laughs> yeah you know? we, we get one little break before kind of like the bye week not necessarily a bye week for us but still a little lighter Light going week, into yes. district play and Dalhart yeah. Pampa I do think that's going to be a good one Dalhart coming off their big win over Friona yes. and we kind of know what to expect from Pampa so and I don't know much about Roscoe Roscoe, the Plowboys, they got a great nickname. We know they, that. They the do. Plowboys, <laughs> always traditionally good. So, ought to be a good test for Groover heading into district. We know that. Kel, always appreciate it. Big, back at you, buddy.